Now then, and welcome back to another episode on the FTOG server, playing some more Coatus. Hi, how you doing? Now, you may hear a little bit of a clattering and a banging in the background today in this episode. Um, while I'm recording it, we've got the biggest storm in the UK for ages. Some kind of storm they've called Doris. Of course, Doris brings fear into the heart of everyone. But basically, through the middle of England, there's just a big band of 60 or 70, 80 mile an hour winds. And it's currently coming through my neighbourhood, as it were. And the, the rattling you can hear is the extractor fan from my cooking unit um, that's supposed to only go out is being lifted by the wind as the wind blows around outside. And also, I think a fence has fallen down over over the way, and that keeps clattering around a little bit as well. So I apologise for the extra noises that you'll be hearing in today's episode. It's storm troubles. Storm troubles. But here, I've got uh, I've got quite a bit done. Let's just have a look at this lot, right? There's all of the walls are now alabaster, apart from that one doorway there, which I've left stone because of the outside. Don't know what to do with it properly yet. But I've done the upstairs floor, and I've done all the downstairs. Everything's now kind of like the blank canvas. I put a few canvases up. Uh -huh. Look, see what I did there? Put a few canvases up, and moved my magic era stock here. Britannia, Roots, Evilcraft, and Dark Utilities up here. Uh, so they're not in the lower reaches. Uh, I'll still have lots of supplies down there, but still. Uh, and I've started doing a little something for today's episode. I've been making the clay and some lime dye because today I want to start on my farm project. The feeder requires some lime hardened clay. I want four of these and it requires six hardened clay each. So I've been doing this just to figure it out and then I was messing around with it a little bit more. I've got one ingot of molten clay and that much water. So. Each one, whoa, 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 I didn't mean to put that much in. Each one of these makes uh, that. So we need three more in to cope with the water. And we'll put three more cobble in. And then that should be a full four molten clay ingots, which might be a full block. I don't know. Experiments. I just dumped loads of dirt in and loads of water in and loads of cobble in the first time and just made a ton of stuff. But unfortunately for me, I did not keep track of it and the seared stone three blocks of seared stone let's pour that out uh, it's all gone a bit pear-shaped so for today's episode I'm going to need four feeders from dark utilities which is why I needed the lime clay and uh, so all that sorted out it's quite an interesting recipe it's quite an expensive recipe for such a a small block this really doesn't look like it took six clay blocks but I suppose the expense is all in line with uh, the technology rather than the size and bulk of it all yeah so we've got those and I also want to create some pure daisies because we've got to need some pure daisies and boom yeah we're gonna have a few pure daisies doing a little bit of basic Britannia gonna need some living rock to make some Batania things and some living wood to make some Batania things we're gonna need a mana spreader and we're gonna need a pot to put it in <laughs> a mana pool we're also gonna need some basic mana generation flower and I think the easiest one is probably endo flame brown brown red and light gray uh, there's a light grey. We've got the brown brown. We've got a brown brown. And the red. Easy peasy. We can sort this out. Um, I've got quite a few bits and pieces of Britannia all like basic set up. I'm, uh, I'm not really going into Britannia as a tutorial. I've done that plenty of times before. This is the area that I'm setting up today. We've actually got another key block there, which I need to make lots of them. I need to make lots of them to do this right. Uh, but the key block today is over here. Now, I think this could probably go over here. Yeah, this is a good plan. This is a very good plan. Uh, we'll have... Mm -hmm. We'll have the mana pool just there. 
We'll have the spreader here, facing the mana pool, let's hope. Well, it will be facing the mana pool in a minute, and we'll put the endo flame there. We also need to make ourselves a wand, a little tiny wand thing, uh, and a few other cool plow flowers afterwards. Uh, what colour? I suppose it's got to be purple. So let's have a couple of purple, mystical purples, there we go, and make myself a little wand, which is three of these, and then two of those, thank you. And then we'll bind this up over here into the right place, right, you, to you please, thank you very much. And then when I throw some wood out, or some coal out, or whatever, it should start making some mana for me. And away we go. Uh, this area is going to be my animal farm. And that's the project we're working on today. Let's throw one. And it works nicely. Okay. And that should be the start of mana flowing. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to do this for a bit, just to cook up... Or use up a bit of that to get some mana flowing. Just for now, there's going to be a bigger bigger thing with mana very soon. One of the key things I'm making today, though, why I needed to get the Britannia stuff done, was creating a Dreadthorn. Now, the Dreadthorn will use mana from a local area, like a nearby mana pool, and it will destroy animals. Uh, it's it's like the Bellathorn would hurt all entities around it. This thing will kill adult animals. So, we're, I'm going to have a field full of baby animals down here. And as they turn into anim uh, adult animals, the Dreadthorn's going to kill them using the mana from the nearby pool. I am going to replenish that pool using animal meat and a Gormorellus. A Gormorellus, is it here? There it is, yeah. A Gormor... Gourmet realis, a gourmet realis. Uh, but that requires a rune of summer and a rune of fire, and that requires rune of earth and air or something like that. So it's it needs a runic altar and a load more stuff for next episode. So I'm not going to do the Gormoralis yet, but I am planning on having the Gormoralis out here um, using a hopper hock to suck in all of the meat stuff, some bits and pieces into a sorting system where the food then gets put down here so as the babies grow into adults it will end up getting um, used up to make mana to make this happen and cycle through and on the other side of the farm we're going to have the same thing happening it's going to kill the baby uh, kill the adults when the babies are grown up but a supply of half the supply of the meat is going to come in this side through another hopper hock system uh, I might actually have this side being the mana generation system and this side being the uh, food generation side. Maybe I need to little, put a little barbecue on the side here so it can barbecue its own stuff and this can be a little barbecue balcony. The little uh, little barbecue on the mountain. Maybe. Uh, next up though, these blocks up here. These are from Dark Utilities. The mob filter from Dark Utilities is basically setting it up so that... Uh, only mobs of a certain type can pass through the block. That's the simplest way to put it. So, uh, for instance, these ones here I can walk on. But these are set up to be baby mob filters. So baby animals will fall through this block as if it's not here. Whereas adults and uh, players and other mobs will not. Now what I've done is I've carved out a little section of the mountain here and slowly but surely I'm going to fill in these mob filter blocks. Now because it takes an egg per crafting recipe I've had to make a little egg farm. So the last eggs that I did have, because I haven't had eggs for any particular reason, most of the eggs that I did have I've had to um, set up a little chicken farm so that I can get some more eggs to make these filters. As you can see, there's a lot of eggs going into this particular construction. Uh, but it'll be good when it's done. Um, I just need to get all of those materials made. And then it's basically farm on. Um, I've got the breeders. I'm going to have a breeder in the center of each of these breeding platforms. And I'm going to have the four different types of animal coming in here. And then we're going to have the breeder 
basically oh, I did that wrong. Uh, breeder set up so that we get um, baby animals from each of the pairings. It's going to be a little Noah's Ark type thing in here, and the babies are going to fall through to the bottom. And then when the babies put, fall through into the bottom here, they're going to wander around blissfully unaware that one day when they grow up to be adults, they will get killed by this dreadthorn and I will get all of the drops. Okay, so I've created the initial pens. They have, um, is it 36, 34, 32, something like that. Th was it 3, 6, 12, 24, 36, 36, yeah. We get 36 of the mob filters for babies in each of the sections. And this is just because this is the matching up with the largest area of the Dreadthorn below, really. Uh, there's no other real reason why I'm doing this in this particular layout, other than each of these pens allows me to have a walkway in between the pens, uh, allows to have four pens for four different animal types, and down below, everything is covered within the Dreadthorn's area of effect. So they all drop through into the Dreadthorn's area of effect. Okay? That's the only reason I've done the layout like this. I could probably compact this farm down into a much smaller cut farm where there's just one or two mob filter blocks with a Dreadthorn and all the babies just cram into one place and grow up in one place. But I wanted it to be kind of... A little bit more free range farm like instead of more Minecraft farm like. In Minecraft farms, we tend to have them all like smashed together into one block area. And Mojang, in the latest versions of Minecraft, actually put a mob cap in uh, a suffocation limit. So mobs that are too close together start suffocating, which breaks all those kind of farms anyway. Uh, what I've done then is I've put this. Um, Bannister rail all the way around, the fantasy bannister rail all the way around, yeah, and then added just a little bit of chisel and bits oak wood, um, jugger wood on the top. It says oak wood, and that put me off. Chiseled wood on the top, and that's enough to put the animals off jumping over. But as it's three pixels, I think it's technically four pixels over the uh, the rail and a sp one pixel space, and then three more pixels, so four pixels over, just allows me to to be able to get over. But it makes it look like the animals can't. Because when I first put the animals in, they were jumping over those banister rails all, all day, every day. They were just running around all over the place. I had to catch them all, put them all back. And then I had to put this ring all the way around them again. And it just... I don't know what it is about that little extra. Maybe it's just the same as the carpet trick on a fence. It just makes it so that you could jump over, but they don't see it as possible. They see it as a full block. And so they can't jump over a full blo uh, two blocks. So they don't even try jumping up at a two block high, do they? So maybe that's what that is. Uh, so yeah, I've done all that. And now I need to put in the feeders. Now I've got an idea for the feeders. And I want to try and explain it so that um, in future tech levels, we'll be able to automate it a little bit better. So down here I've got my food processing plant. And just there I've got some food growing areas. So this is all food growing and processing farming and stuff. Right? And it neatly opens up that I've got a wet area here to pipe in things from the processing plant when we've got technology. And I've got a little walk around here to be able to get to the farming level to be able to uh, farm up all the various um, carrots and uh, wheat and the like and seeds and all that for the animals to fill up the feeders manually until then. So I'm kind of bringing piping out this way. This is going to be the plan. The piping is going to come out this way in the future. So for now, I just need to kind of put them in the right places. Okay, so what I want to do to make this automated is, first of all, I'm going to put the um, oak trims in each of the cardinal directions just to make that work. And we're going to put, if I can get over these things that I just said I could get over, uh, as soon as I got a block above my head, I can't jump over. I need that extra little bit of space to jump over them. Um, maybe I'll carve out a few more areas so I don't get trapped in any pens in the future. Uh, and then on this side, we're going to have a draw controller. Uh, that would basic drawers, trims. Yeah, we're going to have a draw controller. So piping can go into the draw controller from over this direction. So I can bring foodstuffs in to feed the animals and bring them into this draw controller. I've got oak trims to make the the uh, food 
all of these linked together. I'm going to have these single drawers, which I'll probably make so that they can fit more food in at some point. Let's jump over here. Uh, I'm going to have all these basic drawers over these sections like this. So that we've got everything we need for each one. I don't particularly have anything yet, but we're going to have seeds for the chickens. We're going to have wheat for the cows. We're going to have wheat for the sheep. And we're going to have carrots for the pigs. Now, I could have put sheep and cows in the same pen. But for symmetry, I decided to go for four. I could do that in the future with something else. Uh, adding other things in there. But I'm not sure I want to kind of kill horses and things. Uh, which will be the future tech. Uh, I'm not sure that I want to. So I might not end up doing so. Uh, and now, this bit here. We need to take these corners off here. And put the feeder block on. Now hopefully they're not going to be able to get out and jump over the feeder block area. Hopefully they're not going to be able to get out there. And I may end up using the um, pixels, uh, the chiseling bits, to just fence off this corner like it's keeping the feeding there. Maybe make a feeding trough in the corner here. In fact, yes, I think that's a good idea, actually. I like that idea. Do some kind of feeding trough here. So they... Uh, it's going to feel like they've got a feeder here, and I'll put some little bits of chisel and bitsy round the sides here. It's glowstone, grass box, stone block. Oh, well, we'll sort it out in a bit. Uh, and then we're going to have a hopper going down into it. So that when that's got something in it, it will hopper down into here to fill up the feeder. So I just need to kind of make this into one of those hay feeder tray trough type things. So just for now, this is this is going to be the way I do it. Manually come over here, gather up the resources, gather up the crops, all the things to feed the animals, bring it all through this little tunnel here, which will eventually be an automation system. I could potentially put a hopper in and have a hopper duct chain, but I don't really want hopper ducts running all the way around here just because I'm too lazy to walk around the corner. And then we're going to have this all set up over here. Let me just get the key. There's a, a little key for locking the drawers. We'll lock the drawers as we go. So that drawer, actually, we can just double tap there. If we just tap tap the drawer controller with a key, it should lock them all. Let's just check that it has locked them all. Yes, it has. Okay, so chickens, you're going to go there. Let me just put one in for now. Chickens, you're going to go there. Right? That's made one of them love hearts because the breeder took one in. Uh, wheat. You're going to go there. I should go down into the first cow, yes. And then we're going to have carrots over here. I think you get the idea. I'm just repeating it because I want to make sure that you see it all working. So that those of you that don't quite understand what's going on can follow along. Those that already know how to play Minecraft and tell me what I should be doing, you guys already know what's going on. Uh, but then, of course, right, when stuff comes along, I can basically fill up. Everything goes into the boxes, the drawers, and then starts filling these feeders. These feeders can only contain 10 at a time of a single amount, so they gain all that. Uh, one thing that I do have to worry about is that the uh, two wheat does not make a full set there we go so now the cows can breed as well uh it's got to be so it re reaches out to the two wheat and doesn't just fill one first but wheat farms are easy enough to make anyway so yeah there we go so the adults have been bred right but you can't see the babies you can't see any babies because the babies have fallen straight through the floor because it's a mob filter floor so adults can stand on it babies cannot and the babies have fallen through here into this area so we've got our first little baby cow our first little baby chicken and our first little baby here and of course because i haven't put any railings around this yet uh the first baby pig has decided to be an annoying little baby pig and run off and the chicken's doing the same over there so anyway i've got to i've got to do something about that really fit uh, really fast put another layer on around here uh, but once these pigs have grown, we've got to do something with them. So I really need to get myself uh, a whole runic altar set up. Get, get off me. Go and eat all of the grass, why don't you? You little, little git. 
growing up eating all the grass. I hope I don't have any grass left by the time you finish then. Doesn't really matter. They don't need grass to grow. They need grass to regrow their uh, wool. So it doesn't really matter if you eat all the grass. But I might just chisel and bits it all so that you can't eat any of it. <laughs> Little gits. All right. Uh, yeah, so also with this mana generation... I need to get something going on with the mana generation fairly swiftly so that we can get that Dreadthorn powered up and keep it powered up. We also need Hopper Hocks and all that kind of stuff, which is going to require me to get the, the Gormoralis sorted out soonish. And these pigs are going to be very annoying. Um, sorted out very soonish because, yeah, this is kind of the next stage of the mission. This project's next stage. But today, the top half has been done. So, okay, there we go. That's all we've got time for in today's episode of Qantas from the FTOG server. Um, basically just setting up this top half of the farm with dark utilities. The feeder and the mob filter working in unison to allow the baby animals to fall through the floor to the level below. Where Batania, in the next episode, shall take over and deal with everything with the uh, meat processing and making manna from meat and making cooked meat from meat and all that kind of stuff will happen in the very next episode so thank you very much for watching today's episode on the screen now you should see some end screen annotations so you can click to have a look at the wiki workout for today's episode thank you very much for watching i will see you in the next episode of Qantas on the ftog server goodbye